Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the show. Do you find yourself exhausted, depleted, cynical, detached, and less effective than you once were? If so, it's quite possible you may be experiencing burnout. Today, we're going to discuss the signs and symptoms of burnout, along with some practical and spiritual strategies to deal with it. So grab a cup of coffee and a notebook and let's dig in. Are you feeling exhausted, burned out, and unfulfilled in your leadership? Do you struggle with perfectionism and people pleasing? Do you find yourself left with no time or energy to care for yourself and your family? Hey friend, welcome to the Grace Filled Leader Podcast. I'm Tanya, wife, mom, leader, and Jesus lover. For years, I tried to find success and worthiness the world's way, only to feel overwhelmed, anxious, and unfulfilled. It wasn't until I surrendered my life and leadership that I truly found freedom. I discovered that we can be effective, purpose-driven leaders while living a life of peace and abundance. In this podcast, we're going to walk through practical solutions for doing life and leadership God's way. If you want to find fulfillment and lead with purpose, if you want to escape the chaos and find peace, if you want to find the freedom to live the life you were called to, this podcast is for you. Unbutton your blazers, sister friends. It's time to dig in. Listen here, sister. Burnout is for real. Before we get too deep into the meat of things, I wanted to just review what the true definition of burnout is and a few statistics that I found interesting. Burnout technically is defined in the ICD-11 as follows. Burnout is a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed and it is characterized by three specific dimensions. First, feelings of energy depletion or exhaustion. Second, an increased mental distance from one's job or feelings of negativism or cynicism related to one's job. And third, reduced professional efficacy. Studies show women are more likely than men to suffer from burnout and more than 50% of women in leadership positions consistently feel burned out. Younger generations, including millennials, Gen Zs, and Gen Xs, all report similar burnout rates of over 50% and getting close to 60%, whereas Baby boomers report significantly lower rates of burnout at about 31%. So the younger the generation, the higher the reported rate of burnout. I found that one interesting. Also, 67% of workers in the United States believe that the pandemic made burnout worse. (laughs) Working in the healthcare industry, I can most certainly tell you that the post-COVID work environment is significantly different than the pre-COVID environment. Based on my observations and those around me, I believe a large percentage of people are functioning from a place of burnout or near burnout. Working in a helping profession such as healthcare, ministry, social work, etc., increases one's risk for occupational burnout. When you add the prolonged and unpredictable nature of the pandemic, I would venture to guess that rates of burnout are probably some of the highest we've ever seen. In people I never would have expected it from, people who have always been service minded, I see signs of burnout. I observe more cynicism, negativity, and less enthusiasm and passion for serving. People seem to be in a self-protective mode, with less tolerance for discomfort, 
or any perception of added workload. They are tending to seek more life on the work-life balance scale. Fulfillment seems harder to find, and leaders are certainly not immune to burnout. It's hard to admit, but I have experienced many of the signs and symptoms myself in the past couple of years, and I know that I'm not alone. In the safe and quiet places where we can share, other leaders report feeling it also. We often feel more pressure to conceal it in an effort to best support our team members. We may also struggle to appreciate the reality and the extent to which it's being experienced by those we lead. I've struggled at times to accept the reality that exists. Coming from a background that tends to weigh the work-life balance a bit more heavily on the work side of things, It's difficult at times to come to terms with the fact that that's not true for everyone and probably not even the majority of people in the workforce today. But it is a reality that we must navigate as we seek to recruit and retain engaged team members. In previous episodes, I talked about the expectations surrounding Christian life and leadership. It is characterized by service and sacrifice. That is and will always be true, but it's important to also maintain focus on keeping your tank full, full of God's strength and enduring presence. Leaders can become trapped in a vicious cycle of unhealthy sacrifice for others, which can lead to burnout. They feel unduly responsible for the success of their business and the satisfaction of team members. Leaders often feel more pressure to not burn out in the first place. We're supposed to set an example for those we lead. But to place undue pressure on ourselves and ignore signs of impending burnout, we may actually increase our risk of developing more detrimental symptoms. One of the first key steps in preventing or addressing burnout is to first recognize the warning signs in yourself and others. Some signs include disrupted sleep, loss of motivation, exhaustion, feeling that every day at work is a bad day, increased irritability, and engaging in behaviors aimed at escaping your thoughts. Now, I may not be talking about anybody in particular, but this could be looking like A little too much Netflix, chips, cheese, and salsa, some extra tasty bubbly wine. I don't know, just a few things that pop into my mind. Anyway, once you recognize the signs, you can take steps to try to help mitigate the effects of burnout. A few practical strategies to consider in your leadership are, first, Delegate thoughtfully and appropriately. Appropriate delegation can be used to empower team members and increase their sense of purpose. It is important to be mindful of their current workload and your messaging around the delegation so that it is perceived and received in the positive way in which you intended it versus you pawning off your work and adding to theirs. Stop and reflect on your original purpose and mission. What brought you meaning in your work before getting bogged down in the current tasks and to-do lists? That's another strategy. Think about how you can revitalize the motivation that comes when working from a place of purpose. Third, set boundaries. Commitment is an important and expected aspect of leadership but overcommitment is not healthy or productive. As leaders, we often feel we need to be on call 24-7, and we sometimes create that expectation in others. It is helpful to establish and communicate appropriate boundaries that protect some of your time off the clock. Just as your team members need to disconnect from work and have focused time for themselves and for their families, You deserve and need that, too. If you never disconnect, eventually you will become depleted and potentially resentful. 
Fourth, ask for help. Connect with other leaders. Consider hiring a life coach or connect with a mental health professional if you are really struggling to see a way forward. Fifth, get good sleep and some form of exercise. It doesn't have to be killing yourself, sweating it out. It could just mean going for a walk out in nature. No decision is a good one made with a brain that is sleep deprived. And research has shown that better sleep and exercise benefits our bodies and our brains. When we exercise, not only do we release the feel-good endorphins we're familiar with, but our brains also release a protein that protects our brain cells from stress and promotes the growth of new neurons. A sixth strategy and an important thing to consider as a leader is how to support some of the same strategies we've already talked about with your employees. Seek to understand what motivates and empowers them and take that knowledge into account when it comes to delegating duties. Help team members to reflect on the why behind their work, the things that brought them to the profession, and provide an intrinsic intrinsic reward. Respect and support appropriate boundaries for your team members. Honor their time away and do what you can to support their roles outside of work. And finally, make it a safe place for them to ask for help. Foster a work culture that promotes teamwork. Encourage a sense of community in the workplace. As we look to a more spiritually grounded approach to addressing burnout, the most important thing we need to do is to trust God and His provision. We are not superhuman. We cannot do everything without God, so why do we sometimes work as if we have to bear the burden all by ourselves? That certainly isn't what Jesus teaches us. In Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30 he says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Another strategy in preventing burnout is to maintain community, especially with friends who will give us perspective based in biblical truth and who will encourage us to continue on our faith walk. This is one that is particularly important for me to remember. My natural inclination in times of struggle is to isolate myself. My self-protective tendency as an introvert is to avoid people and avoid community and fellowship. So this is a big one for me and not a comfortable one when I'm struggling. It's also essential that we seek regular rest, not just sleep, but rest, and in particular, Rest in the Lord. We need to disconnect from the things of this world and have quiet time spent in reflection, prayer, and God's Word. Immersing ourselves in the hope of His promises is key to enduring the struggles of the world and keeping our focus on Him. Jesus Himself took time for rest in solitude, and He encouraged rest with Him for his disciples. And finally, we must remain hopeful in the Lord and turn our focus to him. The world is a difficult place and we can get so bogged down in trying to fix problems, carry the burdens of others, and worrying about the future that we grow weary and forget about the hope we are promised. Isaiah 40.31 promises, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Draw your hope and your strength from the Lord, my friends. And until next time, be grateful and grace-filled. 
I pray this episode blessed you, spoke to you, or encouraged you in some way. If so, please share it with a friend and head on over to Apple Podcasts to leave me a review. That's the only way for me to know if you are enjoying the show. Nothing blesses me more than to hear from you. Also, come on over to our free community, the Grace Filled Leader Facebook group. This is a great place for us to support one another on our faith and leadership journey. Now to Him who can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, according to His power that is at work within us. Ephesians 3.20 Until next time, God bless you, friend.